This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kick still. Kick <laughs> The Trippers, the Grasshoppers, the Hip Ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. All right, hello to our friends joining us now in New Orleans and Bayou 95.7. <laughs> also our latest affiliates, Rock 105, Chattanooga's Rock Station in uh, beautiful Tennessee and Z-Rock 103 in Lexington, Kentucky. Big show for you guys. Ryan Castle, yeah. Drunk in Charge, coming in to sit and spin. Ten songs that turn 40 this year. And speaking of turning 40, what you don't need to know gets rid of half the stuff in your place. We have a list of a bunch of stuff that if you are 38, uh, uh, 40 years old, you should be getting rid of. And another round of a profile that's coming up. Our question today, who or what was falling and from where? A couple stories of uh, people falling off of cruise ships. Uh, two women uh, fell off. One of them fell off a cruise ship. One fell off a private uh, sailboat. Both instances, their husband did not realize that they had uh, fallen off for uh, most of the night. Then we have a couple... And maybe you not notice. Uh, it's been awfully quiet. Mm-hmm. Right? It's going to go to bed. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's been awfully quiet. quiet. I'm just going to sit it's out here. It's been awfully quiet. There's nothing else. To he do. doesn't know what's going on. He thinks she's downstairs. He's going to keep sailing. It's probably peaceful. He's got a bottle of wine. Right, it's, it's peaceful. Time. It's, it's 2 peaceful. a.m. Yeah. Right. All the, everything you just said. Everything you just said is why you should notice. Yeah. It's peaceful. I'm just sailing. I'm relaxing. No one's bugging me. Like, right. There's your tip. Then we have another fall here. She's sail- missing. It is, it is a sailboat. Yeah. Like, if you're under sail, you, you got to be up there driving that thing. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, here's a couple at the Boston Harbor and uh, the hotel there. Truly made a splash with their dance moves, they say. The unidentified couple got too close to the protective rope and tumbled a short distance into the water below. <laughs> have you seen the video? Yes, thank God that was not the Baltimore Inner Harbor. Or they would have been uh, having skin to be... flaking off. <laughs> exactly, it looked like they vacationed at Chernobyl. At Boston's an old town. I don't, I don't know if I want to be in that harbor either. Yeah, probably just like tea. The couple uh, was uh, able to quickly get out of the water, and no emergency response was needed. But yes, they were dancing to the song "Footloose." Why? From uh, Kenny Loggins. Yeah, Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins. Yeah. That's Kenny Loggins. That's Kenny Loggins. I know this sounds bad, and they made it out of the water fine. I'm not a fan of the movie or the song Footloose. And on some level, and this is horrible, but when I watched the video on some level, I felt, you know what, they deserve to fall in that goddamn harbor. Why, because they're dancing to Footloose? Yes. All right. All right, fair enough. White people can't help it. You put on Footloose, they dance. Is that oh, what happens? Down, yeah. Down, yeah. All right. I know. I just, like, I saw it. I, know, like, I can hear the song in my head right now. And you want to move, don't you? Well, I'm just saying, it's a thing. I don't know why. I don't think there's ever been a movie made where they would even try to give you an idea that there was some time where they told black people they can't dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was, uh... They had to call the day. The town burned down. <laughs> it's like there were a lot of those is, movies. In. You know what I mean? So like, dangerous you have to not dance. Seen movie. Hey, listen, kids, you can't dance. Like what the? F- I always thought that too. Like why is danger? Why is it so dangerous to dance? Because you fall in the water. No, there's all because you fall in the like water. The forbidden dance. They or did like, it for your own or good. Like, you know, like dirty dancing was like, don't let, just let them dance. <laughs> just let them dance. Like, like, they're so close to each other. Who's stopping people from freaking dancing? Like there's the dance police out there. Like <laughs> you won't dance in this hall. This dance hall. Like, oh, shut up. If you want to do the world a favor, make the same movie about karaoke. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right? He's like, just in. Right. Like, Stop singing. Jesus. I'm, I would cheer for Please. that. Please. <laughs> like, dance all you want. Just don't <laughs> sing if you're not in the band. Who are, uh, what was following again from where? 844-999-OLA. <laughs> Dear God, man. I have a lot of friends that would lose their ass if there was I, that town. Listen, I know. No karaoke in this town. They'd be like, what? No, I get it. And they would have their footloose moment. And I'm sure oh, at the end well, of it, on. they yeah. would all sing whatever. The, if you can make it musical, but I'm saying I would play the character that says, we're shutting down karaoke in this town. Dance all you want. Please. Maybe, uh, stop uh, singing. Maybe, I ain't uh, gonna have none of that karaoke in, in this town. <laughs> right. You Bartavius Mingos need to shut your little Mingo hole. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> shut your... It sounds so racist. What? That's the man's name. I'm trying to use it in a way that sounds like it has authority. Shut your Mingo hole. <laughs> singing up there, singing like some Mingos. <laughs> singing like some Bartavius Mingo at a bar. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know my buddy Joe. He would sue that town. I'm sure he would. <laughs> Bartavius Mingo, by the way. If I meet him, he's going to kill me. Could you win as a mayor on that platform? Bartavius Mingo? No. Oh. You'll, you'll ban karaoke in the city limits? Uh, you'd get my vote. I okay, don't know fine. if you'd win, but I'm all in. They'd How like, far Dude, are we taking He's going to close down elementary schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah, you I sing in the that. shower? You just, there's no yes. karaoke above. Because at Footloose, there's no dancing, You period. can sing. You just, you just can't just sing not karaoke. In a, right. right. You can't even whistle in the park. Maybe they one, annoy me too. Maybe, I'm sorry. I'll tell you what. Maybe you, just, you can't. Maybe only one day a week is it allowed and stays where people never go out like a Tuesday. 
What, the karaoke? Yeah, karaoke night, Tuesday only. That's no. It. Gonna be going off on a Tuesday. No, man. In my town, it's gonna be like an underground parlor, right? There is gambling, and then there's karaoke. And chicken fights. In the back room, right? <laughs> chicken fighting, gambling, dog fights. And karaoke. Fight clubs. Dice. Right. I will sell guns, I will sell drugs, but the big thing is the karaoke room. That's the one you want no one to mm-hmm. know anything about. Who or what was following, and from where? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Sean. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. All right. So when I was about 15 or 16, it it was around December because we were doing Christmas lights and stuff. Uh, My mom went up on the ladder to go hang some Christmas lights. She normally didn't like me doing it because I'm clumsy and she was afraid I'd fall. Um, So when she was getting done wrapping everything up, she was coming down the ladder. Now, no, it was a two-story house. And where the ladder was positioned, it was kind of on the second story, kind of like a balcony. And so when she was coming down, the uh, wood that the ladder was sitting on, the right corner, was a little rotted. Well, as soon as she stepped on it, it broke through, and she went tumbling over the side and landed straight on the ground. And mind, I was just 15 or 16, I'm just looking at her, and as she's falling, it's like slow motion. I'm just like, oh, eh, and boom, lands on the ground. And as soon as I go over there and my dad rushes out, we look, and her head was about a foot away from our axe that was sitting there for chopping wood. Yeah. Um, Oh. But she's knocked out. After everything is all said and done, go to the hospital. She got a a broken pelvis. And, man, that was just a crazy experience to see. How long was she uh, in traction or out of commission with a broken pelvis? Oh, about... About two weeks. That's, she could walk a little bit with a amazing. walker, but about right. two weeks out. It, it, and did anyone finish the job, or was it at that point in time, like, this is not worth the effort? No, I eventually went up there. She didn't really realize until after it was done that I was the one that went up there to finish it, and she wasn't very happy about that. Why wasn't she happy about that? Uh, well, I'm clumsy, and she was afraid I would right. fall off, okay. but my dad made sure that I wore a harness going up. Yeah, one of you had a broken pelvis. I'm just saying, Mom, get on me oh, about yeah. being clumsy. Yeah. I don't need a walker. I don't think you need I know that sounds cruel, but you get the white ones, you don't need to take them down, you know? Oh, I see how it is. I just leave oh, don't up. have the color ones out year round. Well, you can see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, like mm-hmm. and stuff. it's just well, so much classier with the all-white ones. Yeah, no, it's just the white. It's I, nice. <laughs> do you like white? The color ones are gaudy. you like white? Or do you like color balls? You know me. I want them big and colored. <laughs> I'm here for you, Ted. I want little white Multi- ones. Multicolored. I want little white ones. I know you do. <laughs> and you got them. <laughs> uh, by the way, <laughs> we uh... <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> we were talking about how footloose. And Ted, you said, look, man, white people here are footloose. They, they just can't help themselves. Yeah. So I think someone cleared it up. They said, look, footloose equals white people. Electric slide equals black people. All right. There you go. You hear it and you're like, yeah, I just got to dance. Hang on, I'll be right back. Who or what was be following? Right back. Hang and on. from where? 844 ola What's my old joke like? We will love the electric slide. It just gets a little dicey as we know there's a clap coming up. <laughs> All right. So everything gets thrown off. <laughs> right? Like, oh, where is it? Is it time? Is it time? <laughs> this reminds me of the Macarena. <laughs> Y'all slow. <laughs> Hello, Kelly. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So I got a little skydiving story similar to throw a little bit. Uh, I wish I could say I scorpioned on an electric power line off a roof. I don't. You wish you could? <laughs> why, why? Why do you wish uh, you could say that? Uh, that's like a whole new level of pain. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I got to laugh at a guy for that one, but oh, man. <laughs> anyway, so it, it was my first solo skydive where you static line. So your parachute's actually hooked to the plane, and then as you step out, it pulls the chute for you. Uh and I looked up, I realized, you know, I wasn't falling correctly. I look up and my parachute was just a big ball. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's, uh, that's, that's not good at all. Kind of had to repress that panic urge to cover my eyes and scream like a little girl to my death. <laughs> so I remembered that, you know, they said grab the wires above your head and pull apart and then kick like you're riding a bicycle. And it, it spins you, it creates a spinning motion and... It unspins the wires, and then the parachute, thankfully, opened up to a, a normal. Oh, see, I and didn't realize that. Like, he briefly explained. I mean, the long and short of it, as he said to me, essentially was, if you didn't kick your legs like a bicycle, the chute wouldn't open. We're going to die. And I was like, that's good enough for me, brother. I don't even need the science. But hearing you say it, it's like, 
Okay, that makes sense then. I'm glad I did not look up and see a ball above my head. Yeah, that, uh, that's pretty terrifying. And then for the <laughs> landing, it, it's really hard to judge, uh, you know, your speed. And I don't have good depth perception to start with, but it looked to me like I was moving about as fast as I could run. So I started running in the air as fast as I could. And that was probably about half as fast as I was moving. So when my feet hit, my face immediately met the ground. Oh. And, and then got... I bounced and got about 10 feet of air because the shoe was still going. Oh, no. And did another, another face <laughs> yeah. plant and another one. And finally, it's like, stop. I get up and all my buddies that came up with me are sitting over in the car and they're just rolling on the ground <laughs> laughing at me. And I'm like, oh, I'm just happy to be alive, baby. Yeah, yeah. And that was your first, you said that was your first static jump? That was my first uh, so solo jump. I did five more after that. But, so you got uh, back up and uh, and said, I'll do that again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't be a wuss in front of my boys, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah, that's... Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I, that was just my mind. Yeah, I'm very glad I did not know it was a ball above me. <laughs> like if I looked <laughs> up and saw... Right, 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 right. I'd have been like, bicycling is not going to help. I just... Uh, yeah. Who packs the shoot? I guess you pack your shoot. No, packs? no. All right. Somebody if just, you went skydiving, like they would say, "Do you want us to pack your shoot, or would you like to I want pack them your to own? pack the shoot?" Yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. I wouldn't. Well, no, I'm going to pack my own. Look, here's the thing. If if I, I, would, I would just jump out of the plane need, without one instead there, of wasting everyone's time. I get down to the stuff. ground. I need to talk to the shoot packer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I need to find. You the get guy. to pick. Is there like three dudes? Like all right, I'll take Chuck. Yeah. No. You pack mine. Maybe they do it by weight. I don't know. But, like, the, the, the dude who hooked me in the hem, which it turns out, and this sounds bad. He was kind of the head of the whole thing. So, in my mind, I'm like, sweet. Like, yeah. I, I want the yeah. guy who, so, yeah, the other two people are expendable. But, uh, yeah, he was like, I'll hook you up, and I don't want to know anything. Just let me die. Silicon Ryan Castle, the drunken charge. Come in to Sid and Spin. Today, we'll get the 10 songs that turn 40 years old this year. Coming up with uh, Ryan as we'll sit and spin our question, who or what was falling and from where? 844-999. Ola, more your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Ola, bitches. You're listening to the Men's Room. A teen hiking a mountain yeah. had to be rushed to a hospital after being struck by a sheep that fell off the side of a slope. The incident happened <laughs> on a wow. mountain in down at 4.15 in the afternoon. It is believed the male hiker was walking with a group near the Hare's Gap. Hare is in like the rabbit. Oh. oh Don't. Uh, oh, come on. I, come I, on. I, easy, I'm easy, sorry. Easy. When a sheep fell from a crag... On the Hare's Gap and struck him. Mountain Rescue were called to the scene and the hiker was assessed and treated for a range of potential injuries, including head, neck, back, abdominal, and leg injuries. He was taken to a hospital for treatment. He was discharged. But yes, Sorry. he was uh, hiking and was hit by a falling a falling goat. A falling goat. They, falling they really goat. should have a sign for that. Mm -hmm. He was walking with a group. Team responded, located the casualty of uh, uh, on steep ground. They were, they were hiking. Mm -hmm. I'll give me never see that on the nature documentaries. The sheep was not injured in the fall, by the way, if you're wondering. He probably does it all the time. No, I'm saying they, every time they show those things, it's how great their balance is, how small the ledge is. Mm -hmm. right? And no matter, they'll show them jump from one rock to another. It's a 15-foot jump. They land on this three-inch edge, and it's always about their balance. Why don't they show the ones that fall? Because at least that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he found the because the way they show it in nature, you you wouldn't think it ever happens. They remind me of uh, and just got hit by one. Like just kind of how they can stay up on that wall of ice. And you're like, how are you up there, man? That's crazy. That, that's what I think. They're just too. on an edge. You know what I mean? Here we are in nature. And Miles is like, like snowboarders, They're man. They're crazy. Yeah, it's like that. It's like straight that the one. hell down. Those guys are just up there, just standing around. That's like, my no, point. No, that's wrong. They're not that good at it. That one fell. Well, I think they are good at it. This well, is the first time we heard of one falling. Well, I could fall. And this one just happened to hit someone. I think it also lets you know how big bears are. What do you mean? Like those goats over time and sheep were just like, you know what the hell with it? We'll just climb <laughs> these rocks. Just, I will live on a cliff. Right? right? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Who or what was falling and from where? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Lee. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So I'm going to set the mood. Oh, right, baby. Early morning, mm. my friends and I were all hiking. Decided to take a pick stop and have a little smoke time with nature. You guys never uh, been out and about hiking and seen how there's platform rocks, the big old, you know, like a four foot platform rock where it kind of steps up is almost like steps. Yeah, sure. So we decided to walk up and climb up on top of this log that had fell down. 
decided to smoke on top of this log and everybody was hooting and hollering for a minute we decided to get back to our our uh, hiking and as we were jumping down we we're all laughing about this joke and a buddy of mine whenever he landed we we're out in brown's point and he decided that his left foot should be a little bit cocked so right whenever it landed it landed on the outside edge and completely blew out his ankle oh. like it kind of rolled inwards and his leg went down but his foot turned sideways you can picture that yes i can picture that mm -hmm. thank you thank you yes yeah no you're definitely you're, you're welcome he uh shattered his ankle and ripped every tendon in his foot to where it was how far were you guys out from the from the car? How how far on the trail were you at that point? Uh, it took us an hour and a half to get him down, but luckily we we hike a lot, so we have uh, like just in case of emergency, we have um, oh, it's like a hammock that two people can tie on to their um, to their backpacks from one to the other, just okay. in case somebody gets injured. All right, that's a good. So idea. About an hour. But, uh, yeah, he ended up going to, uh, going to the yard, getting, uh, I think, about 55 stitches, a bunch of screws and pins in there his leg. But he went from uh, being a humorous laugh down. It, it was only like a six-foot drop, nothing serious. It's just the way he landed. Well, it sounds like it's, a compound fracture if he had to get all those well, stitches yeah. in, too, like the bone came oh, through yeah. and everything else. That's a, that's, a, that's a doozy. Oh, yes, it did. It, was, it went from laughing to... <laughs> That'll kill your buzz pretty quick, too. I was going to say, man, it's a real problem, buzz kill. It doesn't matter what you're on, if you're a little bit buzzed on alcohol, you're stoned. The moment that something happens like that, the whole thing is just gone. You could probably take a, a breathalyzer and pass. Like somehow I mean, in that I don't moment. Know how that happens. Your body just goes, no, 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 no. you got to take care of this. <laughs> you must deal you gotta with this. you got to handle the situation. Who or what was following in from where? 844-999-OLA. I feel like if your body can do that, then can you do that for the hangover? Like, can you say, oh, man, I have to go to work today, and you have the same reaction, and then just put it aside? Sure. Yeah, come on. Landed in the... What mm -hmm. are you saying? Landed Hello, Manny. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, we putos. Hola. Hola. How's it going, fellas? Doing well, sir. Enjoying the pea soup air? We are. Yes, of course. Um, Hashtag little white ones. Yes. Ted for the win today. All right, guys. I was in Taiwan and hiking in the jungle with some South African friends of mine. Oh, we all do and that all we, the time. Sure. Oh, all the time. Taiwan, my South African as, friends. It's just what we do. Sure. As you may do. As you do. That's why I'm the worldly red Mexican. But here's the deal. We get to the top. About a 30 foot, 35 foot crag. And there's this lonely piece of vegetation, this little stick of a tree, kind of, you know, kind of like in the cartoons or whatever, just kind of sitting there. The only thing at the top. We get to the top, and I'm, you know, now we may or may not have ingested a fair amount of Nepalese temple ball hashish. <laughs> so things are a little, you know, fun. I thought I'd be cute and do a do like a Wolverine thing, jump and swing off the tree and swing back around to the peak. Didn't quite work out like that. Uh, One, because that would be Tarzan, not Wolverine. So if you're channeling Wolverine, <laughs> if you were channeling Wolverine in that moment, maybe that's why it did not work, as he is not known I, for I his mind swinging. I, I mayhaps should have gone for the Tarzan mode. But <laughs> yeah. Anywho, I, it ended up Wiley Coyote because the thing snapped, and I literally had eye contact with these two friends of mine, and they, we just all of like eyes got wide, and I went. How far did you drop? Down. Now, <laughs> well, here's the deal: At the bottom of said rock face was more rocks, and so I knew I was pretty much gone. I did a ninja spin cat thing in the air like twisted back into the rock face and push off of it into like a 15 foot tree so i fell at least a straight 20 feet down and no way is this the story over. you tell chicks at the bar or are you being yeah. for real no, well, i swear that every i have pictures of me getting my head sewn up <laughs> I, I dislocated my shoulder in the, and split my head wide open okay now, if my if my South African friends were around, I'd, I'd have them verify this. In fact, I'll have them email you. What the, what is the deal? What does this cost? I, I, what's that? What does the hospital visit cost? Like ten bucks? Yeah, in Nepal. Yeah, oh that? no, no, this is this is Taiwan. You have like socialized. Uh, oh, so it's free. Medical care. It's free. It costs five bucks. Oh yeah. It costs five. Yeah, five bucks. Use your copay. Unbelievable. 
They sewed me up real good. Dislocated my shoulder, slipped my head wide open, then proceeded to drop out of said tree, climb back up the rock face <laughs> to where my friends were obviously grieving. They literally thought I'd, like, they looked at each other and said, oh, S. Dude, snuffed. Like, there's no way. You sure you didn't see them, I like, blowing climb- out a candle and finishing mm-hmm. up a high five yeah, real quick exactly. <laughs> when they saw you? <laughs> They might they might have been they might have been a little more like that I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I like to think I, I was held in higher esteem by them, but yeah. So like literally, I get up to the top of it and I'm like, "Hey guys, whoa, that was gnarly." They are just like jaw drop on the floor. What is going on here? No way. I'm like, man, wow, that was rough. And I was like, I'm good. And then I just. Poof, face planted right <laughs> just I was going to say you just had enough adrenaline to get you up there you know just a quick side note yeah. and and I just I want to verify a belief I've always had this is why I don't go hiking with South Africans mm-hmm. right this only this only happens with my South African friends any other nationality I'm fine South Africans are there I'm not saying they cause accidents but weird things seem to happen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or what was uh, following in from where years miles 844-999 Ola what about a guy from West Africa I'll hike with him. That's yeah. not a problem. Just, oh, I'm pretty clear. It's just South Africa. I'll even go with the guy from, uh, was it Algonia or Algonia? I was just in Algona the other day. Algona? Uh-huh. You were in Algona. Yeah, which is close to Algonia. Right. Hello, Dave. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. So, I'm 45 now, and my, my brother is seven years younger than me, and... So, back when we were kids, it was, you know, parents would say, guy, get out of the house, go do something. There was no PlayStation or Xbox or right. Playboy, uh, you know, anything. Playboy. Yeah, yeah, Playboy. 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 Xbox, no. PlayStation, Playboy. Playboy. We had all that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we were at uh, my parents' friend's house out in Shelton, and they kicked us out of the house. There was four or five of us kids, and, of course, you know, I was probably 10, 11 years old. My brother was three or four. All right, take your brother with you, ten, you know. I didn't take him with us. So we were out in the woods, and out there there was uh, these trees that were probably 30, 40 feet tall, and there were pine trees that were dead already. So we thought it'd be cool to shake these trees as hard as we could, and then the tops would snap off and they'd come falling down. Good Pretty times. cool, you know, get our, get our adrenaline going. Sure. So I'm... I'm shaking this tree as hard as I can and the top snaps off of it and it comes straight down and hits my little brother right in the head. Oh. <laughs> oh. I feel like this I should mean, be like I feel like this should be like a commercial for like the March of Dimes or someplace where you donate toys for kids right. at the holidays. You know, like these two kids, you know, like just out in the woods shaking trees for fun. Like, you know, you, you can donate a board game. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean like something. you can have a puzzle. You can, you know, do something else. How, your, b- how bad did it mess up your brother? Oh, I thought I'd kill him. I mean, we're talking what, probably thirty feet up in the air, this thing hits him square in the head, and I look over at him and he's bleeding all over the place. That son I mean, of a bitch. Covered in blood. And I'm I'm scary as well now. So I pick him up and I'm trying to carry him through. You know how the forests are around here. They're full of salal and bushes and blackberries. Yeah, it's I'm a forest. And, yeah, I'm tripping and I'm falling down and, you know, everybody else has already ran ahead of me. They're trying to go get our parents. And, uh, Everybody comes out, and they're freaking out because there's blood all over him and blood all over me, and we're just covered in it. And I thought I'd killed him. I guess and, he made it. I guess and, he made it. No, nah, he died yeah. in my arms, Miles. Yeah, exactly. It was the worst it day was, of the day. So the worst day of the day. Johnny Cash's little brother. <laughs> it was the oh. worst day. <laughs> Making coffins out of treetops. Yeah. By the way, your brother's the reason they made lawn darts illegal. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, the whole thing is like, look, man, you understand... What we are doing here, you need to get out of the way. It might have been a good idea to, to, to make those illegal. Who or what was uh, falling in from where? 844-999-0. Look, I get lawn darts that like, they have a point on them. But, I mean, is it any more dangerous than, like, horseshoes in a backyard? No. no if really. you stand in the way of this, right, it's going to really, really F you up. I, I will mean, say, yeah. You I grew up say, with kids that had darts in the basement or something. Yeah, all the time. You still got hit by darts. You were dumb enough uh, either to not get out of the way, right, 
or you walk like the dad's, the kid's father's playing it, right? You're not paying attention to the warnings they gave you. Walk by, see a kid take a dart. Like you don't make them illegal. You teach kids to move. Yeah, you know, I mean, like we I'm tell our you. kids, like, hey, man, look both ways before you cross the street. And we say this because we understand the inherent danger, but we don't outlaw roads. You say at this point, you have to make a judgment to save your own life. Everyone is giving you the same advice, right? Look both goddamn way. And the car is going to mess you up worse than a freaking lawn dart. The only thing I know with a lawn dart, and it's been years, but I mean, I played with one, played with some like a decade ago. Yeah, we was, bought them, and then you, you broke yeah, up with the chick you, who still has them. Right. You lost That's them. not my fault. You lost them in a divorce. <laughs> I was like, damn it, man. But dogs. you got to be careful about dogs with them. Sure. Because dogs don't really look up. They just kind of run around. Well, if they do look up, they want to catch mm-hmm. what's coming down. That's, yeah. that's an That was the only problem. thing I remember being like, oh, man, I almost hit a dog. <laughs> Rotisserie. <laughs> right. Who or what was following in from where? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Dylan. Welcome to the men's room. Guten Tag, bitches. Hola. So my story is I was in the uh, Army. I was a paratrooper. We had a guy jumping out of the plane. I'd already landed on the ground and was just waiting for the day to be over. He exits the aircraft, and he just starts spinning like he has no control over his chute. He lands like a sack of potatoes on the ground, and we all go rushing out to the airfield to you know, check on. We think he's dead at this point. Uh, fortunately, he was alive. What ended up happening is he had a brain tumor that he didn't know about until he exited the aircraft and passed out from the change in pressure. That's huh. when his body decides to let him. We know you're 10,000 feet above the air, but you should know you have a tumor. How did he live? Yeah, he should, uh, so fortunately, because he was passed out, the parachute was open. So when you jump in the Army, it's called static line. All right. Right. When you jump out of the airplane, the, the chute is pulled open. So he, because he was passed out, he didn't tense up. So fortunately, the injuries were surprisingly minor, like no broken bones, uh, bloodied him up pretty good, though. I want you to think about this. Like, fortunately, you seized with a brain tumor, right? and that's kind of what saved your life. Well, when I tensed up when I got into a wreck, I saw it coming, and it was like in slow motion. Relax, and I tensed bro. up, and then, it, and then it hurt. Sure. But it makes sense what, you know, guys who are uh, drunk, DUI guys who don't even know are pat people who fall asleep at the wheel. They go through a windshield and, you know, and, and walk they, over. They, they, they're the ones that uh, okay. end up, you know, in much better shape than everybody hey, man, else who's involved in it. When you do these static jumps, is there a backup shoot? Yes. There okay. is a, a, you have to manually pull it right on your chest. Yeah, I got no you problem have to with that. Open it because if, if your chute doesn't open. It just okay. seems like, because I always see that, like in the movies and stuff, and I always thought, man, like if you jump out and the thing isn't open, like, are you just the guy that goes by your friends at 180 miles an hour and slams into the ground? <laughs> I mean, if you if you realize you don't realize it till too late, you're not going to land pretty with those uh, secondary shoot. How many going to uh, land bad? You're probably going to break something. So how many? So you'll feet, live. How many? So like, if I go skydiving and I want to say they dump us at ten thousand feet, but it's not a static line, we get some free fall. So if I'm jumping in the military and it feels the need to open my chute immediately, are you closer to the ground or is that just a military thing? Yeah, we usually you jump somewhere between like 500 and 750 feet because the idea is to get you on the ground quickly so you're not just a okay. dangling, yeah, target. dangling target. How, so, many, how uh, many of these jumps did you make? I, I think I did like 75 or so in my Army career. Would you ever want to go and do it for fun? Is it something that you enjoy yeah. to the point where you would go back and do it again? I, I do it for fun if it was civilian, so I had like the control over the shoot. It's not the military shoot designed to get you on the ground as fast as possible. Well, they want to get well, you on the ground as quick as possible, you, you don't need a shoot. You can't control the direction of the shoot in a military shoot, is that what you're saying? I mean, it, it's very little control, uh, but they're designed to get you on the ground quickly. Right. We did the math ones, and we hit the ground about 25, 30 miles an hour. Compared to 20, if you were to use the so, Well, how do yeah. they tell you to land, then? Is it kind of like heels out and slide as far as you can? Because 25 miles an hour <laughs> is substantial. You, you're, you're, uh, they, they teach you how to fall. It's called a parachute landing fall. But like they drill it into you before you jump. They drill it to you, into you before when you go to school to learn how to jump and all that. And you do remember it when you're when you're jumping. Uh, you know, it, it's more of a uh, clinch and pray kind of situation. But okay. yeah, all right. really clinch and pray. I like the <laughs> clinch, clinch and pray pr- method. Huh? Yeah, it does. I mean, I gotta say though, it does look cool. It also looks scary. It does. That would be five hundred like, awesome. feet. Yeah, because right, you that. want the plane to fly in low. You want those guys on the ground so they can start doing. That stuff. should replace thoughts and prayers. What's that? Clinch and pray. Yeah, the clinch. Hey, we're clinching clinch and praying pray. for you. Hey, man, hang in there. I would believe that more. Gen- and generally, if you're <laughs> falling off something, you're clinching and praying. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You, right, because if you jump, you kind of planned it, but falling means clinching you didn't plan it. Yeah, but the thing is, once you jump, even if you planned it, inevitably, what you're doing now is falling. Like, you said, I jumped, but once you jump, you're now falling. So even the guy that fell, he's falling, he just recognizes. Right, but I'm saying when you jump, you have like a plan. 
They like when do. I jumped off those high dives, right? Yeah, like we had a plan. Sure. We're wave our arms, this right, and that. Right, right, right. generally, like when I fell off the balcony, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, just going. Going. you're just going. You're just going. OS. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, but you did those high dives, and you said, yeah. what was it? Did you do 30 feet or 20 feet? What did you do? 30 meters? I've no, no, right. no, no, no. That'd be no, 90 but they're, feet. But they're dude. not feet, are they? I've done some stupid stuff 12 on the bridge. Me- they're high 12 meters. 12 meters is still like 37 feet. That's why when that girl got pushed off that bridge, she was so messed up because you're she at a height. She didn't plan it. That's a dangerous height. Yeah, her friend pushed her off there and really messed her up, broke her ribs, did right. all that crap to her. I mean, like, if you don't land right, that's why you need to know how to, like, paddle your but arms. even when you did all that, how did it feel when you hit the water? Oh, awesome. But she was very clear. Like, you're not, like, because we went, I didn't go to the highest one, the third highest one, but she was like, you're not diving. You're going to hurt yourself. Oh, right, right, right. So she was like, you jump and you, like, wave your arms so that you don't go right or left. Because at 30 feet, right, like, if you go to the right, it's going to hurt like hell when you hit that water. Mm. Yeah, it's no fun. You pop a lung. Who or what was uh, falling and from where? 844-999-OLA. Hold the line. More of your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Welcome back to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. A man has died after apparently slipping in his bathroom and stabbing himself through the eye with a handle of a toilet brush. The 60-year-old, who has yet to be named, had to have his skull opened in a bid to remove the brush, which had embedded it through his right eye. However, he died in the hospital despite doctors' attempts to save him. The incident happened at his home near Moscow. Again, just the idea, right? You die. You go into the afterlife. Some people, I died in a hail of bullets. I died of old age. I, I died as a hero. And this guy's like, let me get this straight. I am dead now. They go, yeah, yeah, that's right. And the way I'm going to be remembered is that I tripped out of my shower and put a toilet brush in my eyeball. And they say, embedded it all the way through into the brain and killed him. Yeah, yeah, we're sorry. We had that as a way to die. We spun a wheel and it landed on your name. Nothing personal. We've seen it. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we are farmers. <laughs> you think it's crazy that a man could... Bum, 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 bum. The aristocrats. Who or what uh, was uh, following in from where? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Tony. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Oh, hello. hello, Tony. Hey, hola. Hey, I, uh, I was working in Alaska on a barge in Cook Inlet. And, uh, you know, it was a real clutch situation. Uh, ice was there and the barge was going to, the lines were going to part. We're all up there hustling around, slacking the lines, trying to get off the dock. And, uh, I see, I stepped right off the back of the barge. How far is that? Uh, it was about 30 feet to the water. Oh, and the water's yeah, freezing went, cold. Yeah, through the ice. Oh, oh, damn. Oof. Oh, man. Oh, no. So now I'm under water and under ice. But luckily the ice wasn't all that thick. It was kind of broken up because it was drifting down. Because you broke like, through it. Yeah. Lucky. And so I, I go way underwater. I fell 30 feet. I'm in full work gear. But I had on, you were required to wear, a, it's called a Mustang suit. It's flotation. So, and, and it's, you know, fairly insulated. So I start kicking as hard as I can. Because I know there's ice above me, and and I break through the ice, and, and right in front of me is a ladder. It's you know those ladders cut into the side of the barge. They call them pigeon holes. So I grab the ladder and, and I like scamper up it, and I'm I'm there on the barge, and you know pretty much in shock, going well, you know I'm alive. I'm back on the barge, and uh, the mate, my boss, is standing there, and he looks over at me, and he goes. Uh, what the heck are you doing here? You're supposed to be at the end of, other end of the barge. He didn't even did oh, so no one even knew you fell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had no idea I fell. So, Golly. Meanwhile, my deck partner is running down the barge, screaming man overboard and stuff, you know. And finally the mates go, hey, why are you all wet, you know? What? Uh, so, why are you all wet, man? Yeah, yeah. So I had to go back to work. And as soon as we were done, you know, I got like a smoke and a. And a cup of coffee and a Snickers bar. But you're saying it was not, the water was not cold? Was it more adrenaline? I mean, what was the... It was all adrenaline. Yeah, the water's cold. It was, it was I mean, like, so I mean, I like, did you not feel anything? I mean, like, you don't bring that up. See, I ought to be just like screaming the F word, like, ah, I'm so cold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, your, your guy on the phone told me not to use the F word. There was yeah, a right. lot of colorful language, yeah. Oh, I'm sure there so was. you tell me, after yeah. you fall 30 feet through the ice into water, kick up through the ice... Luckily, climb on to the goddamn barge that a cigarette, a cup of coffee, and specifically a Snickers bar. That was your go-to. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I got out of the deal. Why did you, did you, did you use that in their commercial? Were you able to write yourself in the air, or did you just land how you landed? Oh, I was, you know, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. Pretty fast. Okay, but I, free fall. I, I must have gone in feet first, I mean, because that's I was upright in the water. And I must have gone in pretty straight because, like, the current was running. That's why I came up at the ladder. I traveled underwater probably... Forty feet down the Jesus. side of the park. Jesus, that's how yeah, much. That, is that how much? Is that the drag? Seven, is seven that, or eight knots. That's that, why it was such a clutch situation. Is yeah, that, that's a clutch that, situation. Is that, is that the drag from the boat causing that? What's that? Is that the drag from the boat causing that? Like no, it, no, the tide was running. The oh, tide oh, was going oh, out. oh, God, man, you could have died. Oh, hey, yeah, thanks, yeah. Miles. There's absolutely no reason I didn't. That, die. that is amazingly lucky. That is just amazingly <laughs> lucky. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if yeah. lucky's the word. Yeah, to be have that ladder in front of you is lucky. No, Not the falling off the boat part. After you fell off the boat, to go which 40 I feet find, to my mind, remarkably unlucky, things after that were as fortunate as they could be. Correct. I Luck. think maybe that's the way you put it. Yeah. But at no point do yeah. I think, man, oh, man, you're lucky. Yeah, you're lucky that the ladder was there, but it's only because you fell off of a barge into the icy water. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. It is a weird feeling. Have you ever fallen off a boat before? Oh, it's, Negative. A horrible, it's a horrible feeling. I got tackled off one once. Off the boat? Yeah, we were on a pontoon boat on a lake, and my buddy, I was standing there, and he just shoved me from behind. <laughs> uh-huh. So I wasn't ready, and it kind of took my breath. Right. And then when I came up, he shoved me back under. Jesus. And when I came back up the second time, it was like... <laughs> and then everybody's like, dude, are you all right? I was like, no. Like, How did you drown me? What an ass. But you're right. Falling or anything uh, off a boat is just horrible. Who or what was falling and from where? 844-999-OLA. Put the flag up. I would just think, at least with a boat, if nothing else, you're thinking it's water. So I still got a fighting chance, right? Like if I fell off of a balcony, and I know you've done so, yeah. Ted, but if I'm falling off of a balcony, like my thought process is a lot different. Like this is really, 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 really going to suck because it's probably not water below me. Right. So at least with that, there's that much. I think it depends on where you are. I think falling off a boat where you can see land is one thing. Falling off a boat. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely yeah. terrifying, man. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that, but somehow you'll be on a boat, and like you're cool when you're kind of going down the coastline. And once they, they break for the open water and you realize, like, man, there is no land. And even if the land is, it's not swimmable. It's not yeah. like you can, but you still feel better. Like, mm. I have a fun. To me, once land disappears, like, all hope is gone. We had, yeah. uh, my dad had this catamaran. It's a Hobie craft. And it, you just basically sit on this canvas in the middle. Yeah. And you take off on two pontoons. Well, when the wind gets really, really heavy, you take a pontoon up and you kind of need to lean back and adjust the weight a little bit. You can, we had to get out of a situation because it was a thunderstorm coming, but you can lean back into it, whatever. And you have a floating lightning rod. You're basically floating, right, on one pontoon going as fast as you possibly can. And you're leaning back off the boat to kind of even out the weight. Well, if you don't even out the weight, then the sail basically just goes straight into the water and you go freaking flying. <laughs> and when I say you go freaking flying, I mean the boat just stops. stops. And you, the inertia, you just, I mean, it's like someone, pushed you with a cult. It's unbelievable the force that you feel. And you're just like flying. It's like you like you can't even keep you're your just head. looking down to the water. You're just and screwed, man. And then you <laughs> smack and you skip off the water. You know what I mean? And you're like, oh, God, I'm alive. <laughs> Who or what was uh, falling and from where? 844-999-OLA. OLA. The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.